Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way. I'm available to you. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Use me, Lord. To show someone the way I never mean to say My storage is empty And I'm available to you I'm available to you, I'm available, Lord, oh Lord, I'm available to you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do what you say, use me, Lord. Just to show someone the way. Mm -hmm. I is empty, and I am available to you. Father, thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your loving kindness. We want to bless the name of the Lord and say, Father, I return the praise to you. I come to return the glory to you because you are faithful. And you want to say, Lord, I am available to you. I am available to you, available to God, available to God for his glory, for his use. And say, Lord, I thank you. Oh, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. He used the donkey, the donkey to correct the Balaam. He goes, say, Lord, you can use me too. My storage is empty and I am available to you. Want to say, Lord, uh, by your mercy, by your grace, I am available for you to use. I don't know what area you want the Lord to use you or what potential and blessing is given you, but I want you to know that if you surrender yourself to him and say, Father, I'm available to you. I'm available to you. He's going to use you. You say, Lord, I am available to you. He's going to use you. He's not looking for your eloquence. Moses was a stammerer. He used them. All that he needed was a submission. All that he needed was, yes, Lord, hear my Lord, use me and send me and he's going to use you. You don't have to go to China. You don't have to go to Africa to be used by God. God can use you right where you are. You just got to be available unto him. I want to say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I'm available for you. Lord, I'm available for you. No more excuses. Moses began to give excuses. Moses began to say, I'm a stammerer, I don't got this, I don't got that, and da 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 And he was stammering and stammering before God. But God always have a solution to every excuse. All he wants is your availability. All he wants is for you to say, Lord, uh, use me. 
Use me, Lord, I'm surrendered to you. Use me, Lord, I come for you now. I'm going to be used of you in the name of Jesus. As you give him the glory, give him the praise today. In the name of Jesus, say, Father, I surrender to you. I'm available to you. I surrender to you. I'm available to you in the name of Jesus. Welcome to the broadcast of the Holy Spirit, Fire Hour. We come every Friday with the word of the Lord, the word of revival, the Holy Spirit, Fire Hour. When I say, Lord, I am available. I am available. I am available to be used of you. I am available, Lord. I am available, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. You want to say, Lord, I am available. I'm going to be used of you in this season. Whatever you want to do, Lord, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. That was a prayer. That was a prayer. The Lord, whatever you do in this season, don't do it without me. Yes, don't do it without me. You don't want to be counted out of what God is going to do in your life in this season. I say, Lord, use me. Use me to your glory. Use me in the name of Jesus. I want to be an instrument. I want to be a willing vessel in your hand that you will use me in the name of Jesus to spread the gospel, to spread the word of the Lord, to bring the good news, to bring the word of the gospel and good news everywhere in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, use me. Lord, use me to your glory in the name of Jesus. And I tell you, God is looking for a vessel, is looking for who he's going to use, and he's going to use you in this season in the name of Jesus Christ. Give him the glory, give him the praise in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I'm available for you. I'm available to be used by you. I don't know if you got some excuses, but it's time now to say, Lord, I, I, I'm going to surrender to you. I'm going to surrender to you in this season. I want to be used by you. I want to be used by you to be an instrument in your hand, to be a willing vessel in your hand. He said, in a great house, there are many vessels. Some are vessel unto honor. Some are vessel unto dishonor. But I tell you, you don't want to be a vessel unto dishonor. You want to be a vessel unto honor. Say, Lord, my very existence, my very life is in you and i know that you're going to use me to your glory i know that you're going to use me as an instrument for your purpose because i'm here for a reason i'm here for a season i'm here for a reason i'm here on a sermon for the lord and you got to discover what your destiny is what your sermon is what god has created you or send you right here to achieve uh, don't you let anybody tell you that you ain't got no purpose don't you let anybody tell you that you 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 you're good for nothing but you got useful in the hand of the master you are useful in the hand of the lord and you're going to say, Lord, you're going to use me as a willing vessel in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, as I am available. I am available. I am available. I tell you, you can only, you can only become useful when you are used by God. And you had a saying that said the devil's workshop and hide to hand and hide to hide to hide to is the is the devil's workshop. That is to say, if 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 you don't get let God use you, uh, well, the devil's not going to take permission before he use you as his instrument, and that's never never going to be good. That's never going to be a good story. You want to say, Lord, use me as an instrument in your hand. Use me in this season in the name of Jesus that I may fulfill the purpose that. I'm going to fulfill the reason why you have blessed me and you've given me the strength of life and the breath of life in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus. And if you have found and discovered your purpose and the reason and you're fulfilling that assignment right now while God is using you, you also want to pray for a moment and say, Lord, you're going to strengthen me. The strength comes from God to be strengthened, to be used by God. It is God that will strengthen you and make your purpose and your calling and your election sure. But he said, the gift and the calling of God, they are without repentance. You want to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, strengthen me in this season. Use me to your glory. Luke chapter 22 and verse 43. 
Luke chapter 22 and verse 43. Is that and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven. Luke chapter 22 and verse 43. There appeared unto Jesus uh, an angel from heaven uh, and is strengthening, strengthening him, strengthening him. The word strengthening him in that it, it means an impartation. It means that he, 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 he was empowering him. It means he was encouraging him. He was inspiring him. He was filling him with strength, uh, filling him with power. And I tell you when you say I'm available for you God's going to fill you with his power God's going to use you to fulfill the assignment and the calling and the election that he has called you and the vision that he has given you and the dreams that he has given you but you need the strength of the Lord you need the strength of the Lord to fulfill that calling you need the strength of the Lord to fulfill that mission you need the strength of the Lord I mean, what regardless of whatever the the, the 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 thing that God has called you to do, you need the strength of the Lord. And the Bible says, uh, "Faithful is our God who has called you, and He will do it." Uh, when God called you, He does not call you to do it by yourself. Uh, he will help you to do that which He has called you to do. When you follow His instruction, when you say, "Lord," I'm available now and I need you to help me go in the strength. Uh, Gideon was told, he said, go in this, that strength, the strength of the Lord. Because that is where your victory is. That is where your success is. That is where you're going to make it. That's where you're going to recall success. Joshua was told, if you abide in me, if you meditate in the world day and night, he said, then you are going to have good success good success god does not just want you to be successful he wants you to have a, a, a good success he wants to distinguish you for a successful successful assignment in the name of jesus christ philippians chapter 3 and verse 12 philippians chapter 3 and verse 12 paul the apostle began to say that not as though i had already attained you haven't arrived yet you haven't achieved yet. You haven't accomplished the whole mission that you sent on a summon here to do yet. He said, not that I have already attained, either were already, either were already perfect. I'm not perfect yet. I'm not accomplished yet. I'm still in the process of fulfilling the mission. And he said that that that, that one thing I began to do that I forget the things of the past. I forget the things of the yesteryears and the yesterdays and the things that should have, could have, would have, and the things that never did turn out the way you expected, uh, and the dreams that have been shattered, and the expectation that have failed, and and and, and all the promises that was not fulfilled. Field. He said, I, I, I leave all the things behind, but one thing that I do, he said, I begin to press forward toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Toward the mark of the high calling, the mark of the calling. There is a calling upon your life. There is a mission upon your life. There is a destiny upon your life. And you need to, to forget the past because you cannot go into the tomorrow morals you cannot press on to the future if you keep holding on to the luggage of yesterday if you keep looking back into the yesteryears uh, if you keep looking back to where you have failed and what you have failed and what they said and what they did to you you cannot press on forward you cannot move on forward uh, holding on the luggages of yesterday holding on to the pain of yesteryear holding on to the struggle and all the troubles that have happened but he said I forget the things that are behind me and now one thing that I do he said I begin to press towards the mark there is a mark that you gotta press on onto you gotta keep pressing on onto he said I press to the mark of the high call it high calling not low calling get out of the low low life get out of the low living get out of the little little dreams get out of the little little petty petty uh, expectation and petty ag argument and petty dramas and all that get out of those little little low life and do what keep pressing forward towards the mark of the high calling the mark of the high calling high 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 god wants to bless you higher 
higher than you think Ephesians 3 and verse 20 he said he's able to make all things abound to you much more than your imagination is going to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you can think above that which you can imagine you know the little thinking little little thinking and little 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 little, little words that have been said to belittle you whatever has been slabbed you whatever has been said to hinder you you got to leave all that behind and say lord i want to press forward i want to go higher i want to fulfill the calling the election you got for me in this season in the name of Jesus Christ there is a goal there is a dream there is a vision that is set before you Paul now said I was not disappointed I was not disobedient to the heavenly calling he had an encounter with the Lord on the road to Damascus in Acts of the Apostle chapter 9 now that is an encounter that turned around is destiny that was the encounter that turned around his journey it, it bible says in that Acts chapter 9 that he was britain he was britain he was full he was brutal he was angry he was mad he was he was he was wicked he was looking for how to destroy how to kill destroy all the christians he was a persecutor of it and he even have a license for it bible says he's gotten an approval from the from from the religious people to go to go to damascus to go samaria go everywhere from jerusalem he's got that mission he's going to kill all them people who said they, they are the new church they are the, they're the day of the pentecost and the day of the of the holy spirit and the people who was calling upon the name of the lord jesus christ uh, but in Acts chapter 9 he had his own plan but God has a greater plan. He has his own plot, but God has a greater assignment for him and a destiny. And he encountered him on the road to Damascus, Act chapter 9, Act of the Apostle, chapter 9. And, and, and maybe you are in the point that it seems there is pressure, there is persecution all around you. But I want you to know that one encounter with God just one encounter with the Lord Jesus now the Bible says all the men that was with him all those people going on that evil mission to kill still and destroy the holy believers they they could hear that the thunder and all that but they didn't see but now 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 they God has called you there are things that other people didn't know about your vision about your calling about your assignment about the dreams and the, the instruction that God has given you and you got to understand that people are gonna say whatever they want to say they're gonna misunderstand you they're gonna to misquote you they're gonna read the um, ulterior motives and reasons to whatever God has called you hit but you don't have to be bothered with that Bible says now in Acts chapter 9 that 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 the eyes of, of, of Saul was blinded by the encounter of the glory that he had with the Lord he couldn't see no more uh, and, and, and God has a purpose for that he was blinded so that he could now receive a new sight uh, you got to receive a new vision you got to see in the perspective of God you got to see the heavenly vision you got to have an heavenly encounter with God that will change your life forever just one word from God just one vision just one yes from God just one encounter with the Lord it is going to turn around everything around you and set you on a new course set you on the path of your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ he said I, I need to forget all the other things all the things that was that was but holding me back all the things he said whether it was success whether it was uh, uh, defeat whether it was uh, and you can be defeated when you walk with God your destiny will always find fulfillment Romans 8 28 he said now all things work together all things including all that they did against you all things he said is gonna work together for your good if you love God and because you are called according to the purpose of God I bring a good news to you today. I'm going to continue on the teaching that I started in the last broadcast of the winning word and prayer hour. And on this Holy Spirit fire hour broadcast, we're going to go further in looking at uh, the reasons uh, and, the, and, and, and how you can uh, understand the divine details, the divine delays and discovery of your destiny. You got to discover your destiny. And I'm talking a little bit on decisions today. There are decisions you got to make every day that we wake up in the morning as God wakes us up and gives us another day and a breath of life in us. Uh, we make decisions, minor decisions, major decisions, life, life, life event decisions. There are different kinds of decisions, but you got to make the right decision. 
the decisions will either destroy your destiny and throw you off course and derail you or you make the decisions that will be a blessing unto the Lord that will be a blessing from God for you to fulfill your destiny. So you got to learn how to discover your destiny, how to, how to fulfill the assignment God got for you and the reason why you are here and why it, whatever you're going through so that you can know how to arrive at your destiny. So I believe somebody's going to be blessed today. I see Kathleen Health. Happy, happy birthday, woman of God. Kathleen Hell. happy birthday to you. I hope you cut the cake and have a party in the name of Jesus we pray for you and every other person today celebrating their birthday that the Lord bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ all right we get in the reading of the word of the Lord Acts of the Apostle chapter 24 Acts of the Apostle chapter 24 and then uh, we're gonna read a little bit verse 26 24 to 26 i would have i would have loved to read the whole chapter but i ain't got no much time on the broadcast so we just get to deal with the with the little time we got and deal with the word of the lord hacks of the apostles from verse 24 i read he said on certain days when felix came with his wife drusilla which was a jewish he sent for Paul and had him concerning faith in Christ and as he reasoned of righteousness temperance and judgment to come Felix trembled and answered blow thy way for this time when I have a convenient season have we called for thee he hoped also that many should have been given him of Paul that he might lose him Wherefore he sent for him the oftener and communed with him. Verse 27 uh, he said, But after two years, Pocius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jew a pleasure, left Paul bound. Like I said, I would have loved to read from the beginning of the chapter 24, but for brevity of time. So we've been talking about delays and in the last broadcast we talked about the fact that there is satanic delay, satanic obstruction, satanic hindrances, satanic barriers that try prevention, that try to hinder you, prevent you from walking in your destiny and fulfilling the plan and the purpose of God. But today we want to look at the anger and the perspective of where God allows you go through certain things. And also, if I have the time, I'm going to talk about the role that you play. And I've mentioned decision and the discipline that is involved in the fulfillment of your destiny and discovery of your destiny. Most times, sometimes, it might not be the Lord delaying you. It might not be God that has caused the detours. It might not be Satan. It might be by your own decisions that you make some decisions that are not right and some decisions by walking in a timing that you shouldn't have and doing what you shouldn't have and being where you shouldn't have at what the wrong time and that might not be the Lord involved in it may not be the devil involved in it it's just because you were stupid didn't make the right decision make stupid decision you get stupid situation so you don't want to make stupid decisions to get yourself in stupid situations. You want to make the wise decision. You want to ask the Lord help me, give me wisdom to do the right thing and speak the right word, get the right attitude on so that I can get to fulfill my destiny in the right decisions, in the right direction, fulfill and get to the right destination that God has for you in the name of Jesus. So Acts chapter 24, like I said, I ain't got much time to go in and treat the whole chapter, but if you would, you will enjoy the reading from verse 1 to the end, 27 verses, but I just read from verse 24 to 27. When God delay, we must trust him by submitting our agenda to him. That's one of the lessons you got to learn. If it's the delay you're in, the season that you're in, what is the agenda? You got to submit your agenda to God. 
in that season. We read in our text, uh, saw Paul, the same Saul that we, we prayed in Acts chapter 9, that had an encounter with God, the salvation experience that turned around his whole life for him to fulfill the purpose that God has for him. He was a persecutor of the church and the Lord turned him into a great apostle and preaching the same gospel he was kicking against. When he surrendered unto God, when he submits unto God, he never, he never was ever in any way the same zeal, the same passion he had when he was walking in the path of destruction. He began to use that same uh, audacity to preach the gospel, that same passion to bring the word of the Lord everywhere that he went. That put him a lot in trouble. That put him a lot. He said in Corinthians, he said, we was, we was, we was in every side there was trouble left right and center and there was pressure everywhere but he said we did not he said i did not i did not I did not compromise my stand. I did not regret the fact that uh, I, I said yes to the calling of the Lord. Uh, I sang a song at the beginning where the whole songs on both people who know that gospel song that you know that Lord I'm available available for you. He was thrown in prison. Yes, he was beaten. He was he was so much persecution. Uh, well, you can say well because he also persecuted the believers, but he suffered also for the same cause of the Lord Jesus Christ and he was able to fulfill destiny at the end of it all. So the Bible says in that chapter 24 of Hark, there was certain days Felix came with his wife, the Bible says the name Drusilla, and she was a Jew, but Felix was a Roman, and he was a judge or the captain or the general that was in charge of the, of the Jerusalem at that time. Now he wanted Paul to bribe him, he wanted Paul to preach to him. Paul began to declare the word of the Lord to him and he said, no, 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 I don't want to hear it now. I, I'm going to have a convenient time. I'm going to call for you. Now, when you are in the season of fulfilling your destiny, when you are on course to fulfill your destiny, it don't come easy. There is no convenient time. Uh, so many that have had dreams and vision and instruction been given to them and they say, well, when it's convenient, I'm going to do it. It will never be a convenient time. It will never be a time that is going to be easy. You got to make out the time to say yes to the Lord. Uh, yes to the Lord, whether in the rain come, rain come shine. Whatever the situation, whatever the pressure, whatever the circumstance, whatever the persecution, whatever it is, the enemy will throw your way. When you say yes to the Lord, uh, you do not turn back on Him. You keep going, you keep pressing, so you can fulfill destiny, fulfill the assignment that is given unto you. He said, now, when it's convenient. We never read anywhere in the scripture where we found that Felix eventually had an opportunity of it was convenient for him. There was no convenient time. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. He said, behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of now not tomorrow not yesterday right now second corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2 he said he was looking for a convenient time that was never a convenient time there was never a convenient time the time is now the time to fulfill your assignment is now it's never late to do it you can f begin to say lord uh, i'm gonna start to do what you have told me there are people who god has spoken to and shown you things to do 20 years ago you kept it still on the shelf in your closet somewhere locked up in storage no get up and fulfill destiny you know what my mom how much much time you got left you don't know how much time that 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 is going to call you you got to fulfill the calling you got to fulfill the assignment you got to do what is laid on your heart and what is commissioned you and what is called you to do don't you delay no more don't you don't you begin to wait for a convenient time felix was waiting he never got that convenient time now he said he also hoped he also hoped that he was going to get a bribe. He hoped that he was going to get money. There are people who all they want, their expectation, their ulterior, their motive is not, is not sincere. And you cannot fulfill destiny around people who hope to, to break the rule and do the wrong and make you do the, They're going to suck you into the wrong track. They're going to help you go in the wrong path of destruction. So you got to know that the expectation, the hope that you have must be placed on God. He said we have a hope in God, a hope in Him. 
Romans 15 13 and Romans 5 5 the hope that you have hope in God never fail you gotta put your hope in God don't you put your hope in people people are gonna fail you and they won't help you to fulfill your destiny but when you put your hope in God and the Holy Ghost it said Romans 5 5 and Romans 15 chapter 15 Romans and verse 13 is gonna help you the Holy Spirit gonna ignite that hope in you and let you know that it's not over yet and let you know that it's not too late yet and let you know that God can still use you and let you know that you can still fulfill destiny and let you know that you are chosen a chosen vessel in the hand of the law that you are treasure in the hand of the law you know them people they may they may they may call you names they may call you trash they may call you no good no good, no good for nothing but when your hope is in god you're going to block out every negative they're saying about you and focus on god to fulfill the calling the assignment they may they may they may, they may say anything that they want to say about you but you know what you're gonna put your hope in God keep on praying keep on praising him keep on sowing the seed keep on believing keep on giving keep on rejoicing in him and you're gonna reap the harvest and you're gonna reap the reward and God gonna get you to fulfill your destiny you never throw in the trowel well when it's come to your destiny you never surrender to the enemy you never allow the enemy to rejoice over you and say yeah they want you to be in depression they want you to give it up all they want you to forget about it but there is hope for a tree the bible says in the book of job he said there is hope for a tree that when the tree is cut down by the saint of water he said he will sprout again say lord water me with your grace water me with your word water me with your blessing water me with the showers water me with your goodness water me with your wisdom water me oh god renew me refresh me lord uh, maybe you've been cut down some way maybe you've been cut short some way your expectation been cut short uh, well, whatever dreams have been shattered uh, but when the word of god and the grace of god rest upon you it is it, going to give you another chance uh, he said the hope for the three that when it is cut down it will rise again but the saint of water is tender fruit we it, it, it will bring forth fruit again it will bring forth leaves again you are rooted in god uh, the enemy thought they cut you down no 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 they thought they buried you they didn't know you was a seed uh, they didn't know that you're gonna grow again they didn't know the rain the sunshine the blessing of god is coming upon you and you will be fruitful again and you will be productive again and you will smile again and you will rejoice in the Lord again uh, in the name of Jesus. Philippians 4 4. He said, Rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in Him. And again, I say, Rejoice. The devil will be whispering to you, What are you rejoicing for? What you got that you're rejoicing? You ain't got no money, you ain't got no nothing. And they, they, they'll be looking at all the negative and be telling you all the past things. Uh, and, but you're going to say, He said, Rejoice in the Lord. And again, and again. And again, he said, rejoice. You gotta rejoice in God. Whether it's a convenient time, whether you don't, you don't gotta rejoice when you got money. There are people only when they got food and the refrigerator and food in the on the table and money in the wallet and money in the bank. That's when they rejoice. But are you still gonna rejoice when your car breaks down? Are you still gonna rejoice when the gas is no more in your vehicle and you ain't got no money? You got to rejoice in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is what you need. The joy is not based on the situations around you. The joy for the fulfillment of your destiny is not based on the circumstance that goes around you. Most of all, the epistles and the and the letters and the, and the and that, that was written by paul who was written from the prison and this is one of such occasion for two years he was down there and felix will not let him go you're gonna pray the lord whoever whatever want to imprison my destiny whoever whatever want to imprison my glory whoever whatever want to keep me bound in limitation and say i'm not going to shine and say i'm not going to go forward I tell you there are families and there are situations, there are countries and there are communities and there are villages and towns and churches and leadership that all they want is to keep you bound. Say no. I'm no going long, no, no, no gonna be living in bondage no more. I'm gonna go forward. I'm gonna fulfill the dreams and the vision God has called me to. They tell you you are not good enough, you're not qualified. Say no. I can do all things through Christ. The one that strengthened me. It is the strength that comes from Isaiah 40 that one. It's a day now that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. You need strength, you need grace, and you need the help of God. 
so that I can help you in the discovery of your destiny. For two years, he was in, in the prison. And that was never a convenient time for Felix to get saved. But Paul, even though he was bound, he was in pleasure. He was, he was, he was, he was still glorifying God. There are people who are happy for your bound, who are happy for your limitation, happy for your situation. But God's going to disappoint them. God's going to put them to shame because He's going to come through for you. He's going to elevate you. He's going to promote you. He's going to bless you. He's going to make a way for you where there seems to be no way, and what they say you was never going to become, and where they say you will never go, and. God's going to make it happen for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, he said uh, he, he, he sought for money that he might lose him. He might lose him. He wants to set him free if only he's going he's gonna to bribe him. Say, Lord, I'm not going to compromise. There are people who go bribing and do things to get a job. and get. If you get it in the wrong way, you will have to keep, keep keeping it in the wrong way. But if you get it in the time and the will and the way of God, it's going to ensure that you sustain the blessing. It's going to ensure that nothing can be can be can can, can be can be able to destroy or to to hinder you from the blessing. Keep it right, even if you are the only one standing standing without compromise. Keep standing, never compromise. But have for the strength of the Lord. That's why we said a prayer in Luke. That the angel of the Lord began to strengthen him. You need the strength from God. People are not going to strengthen you. If they give it to you, they can take it from you. But if God gives it to you, nobody can take it from you. Whatever God has given to you, no man can take it from you. Whatever God has given to you is from above, is from him. The gift, the calling, and the election from God. Yeah, without repentance, they are irrevocable. God's not going to say, I didn't call you anymore. God's going to say, I changed my mind. I'm, 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 I'm not using you anymore. Remember the book of Job? He said, go, go to Nineveh. He, he decided to go to Tashi. But God said, you are the one I have chosen. By fire, by force, by thunder, by whale, by fish, by, by shark, you're going to go. He sent the storm. Now, most times God don't do that. But sometimes he does. So, but the first point I'm making here is God delays. We must, when we are in the season of delay, you must trust him by submitting your agenda. Now sang that song. I'm available. Lord, I'm available to you. Let me say that I'm, I'm, I'm your hand, I'm your voice, I'm your leg, that, that you can use me, Lord, for your glory. Uh, and let me say, my storage is empty. Now, there are so many people with storages that ain't empty. Storages were full with things that they're not going to... Look, there is... When they put you in the hearse, in the ambulance, or what they call that thing from the funeral home, that vehicle that carried the cops, the hearse... Mm-hmm. When they put you in, you will never see a U-Haul with it. So whatever you put in the in the story, they ain't gonna put it with you in six feet under. Even if they cremate you, which is not scriptural, which is not right. If you're planning on cremation, I, I think you want to consider cremation is not of God, but but it's not. It's, it's a pagan practice. But that, you know, if they have to cremate you, they won't cremate with with the stuff you got in storage. The song say, "My storage is empty." That is. I'm using all the potentials, I'm using all the talents, I'm using all the resources to the glory of your name. Lay my treasures up in heaven because I know that one day I'm going to get a result of all, of all, of all the seed that you have sown. A harvest day is coming. A payday is coming. God's going to reward you. Malachi chapter 4. He said, now, them that feared the law, they began to, they began to come together. And he said, now, a book of remembrance was opened unto them. God always keep a record. God is not like man. He kept a record, a book of remembrance, he said, was written unto them. And they was, they was now called and they was now honored for every gift they've given, for every offering they've given. A book of remembrance was opened unto them. Now, the book here. Yeah. Now, nobody stays in office for too long. Felix was removed, Festus was replaced. So, don't you think, whatever the situation you got, there is always a time of office. You know, there ain't no precedent that, that goes forever, except in Africa. <laughs> Except in some kind of kind of other tradition somewhere, you know, in the Middle East, where the royalty and all that, the president is president for life. You know what I'm saying? Now, even for the president of life, he's gonna croak one day. He's gonna he's gonna have to 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 be replaced. So what we're saying here, now Festus, he didn't do what he had to do because he was his expectation, his motives were ulterior, was wrong, and he thought he could end the Paul. But Paul kept writing letters. Paul kept praising the Lord, rejoicing the Lord, 
pray without season. Any man in Christ is a new creature. He sent letters to Corinthian church. Sent letters to Philippian church. Told letters to Thessalonian church. God keep on writing Ephesian church. He kept on doing what God has. Nobody can lock up the gift and the calling of God upon your life. You got to you got to begin to use them, but you got to to submit your agenda unto the Lord. That's my point number one. We have to bow and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And I trust in your agenda for me. For when God delay, we must trust him by submitting to him. We must trust him to accomplish his will through us by his power. It's not by your power. It's not by your might. It's by the grace of God. Ain't nothing you got. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. By the grace of God be humble and acknowledge that it is the doing of God it is the grace of God that has given you the success and the victory and the progress and the prosperity of whatever it is that you got and return the praise to him return the glory to him acknowledge him submit to him and receive his power not by might not by power but by my spirit says the Lord God of hosts. When God delay, we must trust Him and not in our circumstances. Don't you trust in your circumstances? There ain't nothing that lasts forever. Don't you trust that? Uh, 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 well, when everything is rosy and everything is good and everything, and, and then and then uh, you say, "Oh yeah, everything's gonna be all right." Yeah, I believe everything's gonna be all right. But rainy day gonna come someday. But don't you trust in that circumstances? The hard times never gonna last forever. Uh, Robert Schuller wrote that book a classic many years ago Dr. Robert Schuller of blessed memory the glass cathedral mm -hmm. he said tough time never lasts but tough people do tough time never lasts but tough people do from California Dr. Robert Schuller many years ago of blessed memory now so you got to trust in the Lord not in your circumstance when things are good keep on trusting in the Lord when things and the weather changes keep on trusting in the law because his mercy his grace is gonna be there for you he said now he said even though the fig tree shall not blossom even though there be no 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 vine even though whatever he said he said yet I will trust in the Lord my God I will trust in the Lord my God let me read that quickly for you Habakkuk chapter 3 Habakkuk chapter 3 Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 17 he said although the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vine the labor of the olive shall fail and the feed shall yield no meat the flocks shall be cut up from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stall uh, that's not a good one Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 17 you know uh, many people don't want that kind of prophecy they don't want that kind of prophecy they want a prophecy of I'm, going, I'm rich now I'm blessed now uh, you're going to be delivered now yeah those are good those are good but you won't praise God like Paul do in the prison you're going to praise God when, when they play politics over you and, and deny you what you're due to you're going to praise God. You're going to stand for God. You're going to stay and, 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 and still be praised for and still be blessed in the name of the Lord. Or you're going to throw in the trouble and give up. Verse 18. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 18. It says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. The Lord God is my strength. That's where our prayer started today. Strengthening. The angels came strengthening him. The Lord God is my strength, and He's made my feet like the hen's feet, and He will make me to walk upon my hard places. No more low places for you. When you trust in the Lord, when you say, God, I submit to you, I surrender to you, I trust in you to do what you alone can do, and use me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let me just look for that word of verse on Malachi, since I'm in Habakkuk, and then very close book, Malachi chapter 4 he said uh, uh, and and um, all right okay it's Malachi chapter 3 pardon me Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16 he said then 
they that fear the law malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. he said then they that fear the law spake often one to another and the lord hearkened and heard it and the book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear the lord that they and and that taught upon his name malachi chapter 3 and verse 16 they that fear the lord watch your company watch your association watch your conversation watch your 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 groove and your club and your and your uh, whatever you whoever you're listening to why and whatever you entertain and whoever you hang around begin to watch it in your hood in your neighborhood <laughs> is that that, that that then they fear the lord they fear the lord and they came and they talked to one another one another you need your groove you need your who the right people who will encourage you to fear the lord bible say iron sharpen it higher if you're going to discover your destiny walk in your destiny and not be delayed and not be truncated and not be derailed and be detoured out of it make decisions quality decision the right decision to be among them that fear the lord now verse verse he said that the law had it god watches god sees God knows. God sees everything that goes on. Everything said, including every hidden thing, including every secret thing. God will bring them to judgment. God knows everything. The thoughts from afar and everything that goes on and everything that they say. God hacking. God hears it. He said, now the fear of the Lord and the thought upon his name. The thought. What's your thought? What's your thought? What's the thought? What's your thought? What's your thought with you? And he said, now, and they shall be mine. Verse 17. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 17. He said, and they shall be mine, said the Lord. You're going you to be blessed the name of the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm yours. I'm yours. It don't matter who rejected you. It don't matter who don't want you. It don't matter who don't associate with you. It don't matter who don't respect you. It don't matter who don't acknowledge you. But they are my. Say, Lord, I am yours. And that is all. That's all you need. You are the up apple of his heart. You, 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 you make God glad. You make God's mind be happy. God looks at you and says, My daughter fears me. My son fears me. He honors me. And, and, and he walks in my path and follows my word. you got to bless the name of the Lord for that. He said, they, they, they shall be mine. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spare it his own son. That serve him. Keep serving the Lord. You are a jewel in the hand of the Lord. Keep giving, keep believing, keep singing, keep dreaming, keep doing. Whether they, they acknowledge you or not, they clap for you or not, they recognize you or not. Keep doing what God has called you to do. For he will see you in secret. It will reward you in the open. God knows your hard time. God knows your tough time. God knows your secret tears. God knows your pain. God knows your sorrow. God knows your joy. God knows your worries. God knows your anxiety. God knows what the doctor's report say. God knows what the situation around your family is. Uh, God knows the, the pain of your heart. He knows the heart broken. He knows how you was disappointed. He knows how you was lied upon. He knows how that they, they cheated you and they, 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 they promised and they failed and now they neglected and abandoned you. He said, but you are his jewel. You are mine, he said. You are mine, he said. And, and he said, he's going to spare you but the condition is you got to serve him. you got to serve him and keep on serving him. And say, Lord, I will serve you in the hard time. I will serve you in the good time. I will serve you on the rainy day. Though there be no food. Though there be no, no, no. He said, God kept me. God will keep providing. God never fail when you hope in him, trust in him, and believe him. It will always come through for you in the name of Jesus. You are a jewel. You know, women, we, we use jewelries. You know, jewel. Jewel. You don't put your jewelries just anyhow, anywhere. All right? And, and and you care for your jewelry box you know where you hide it and that's you as jewel and the word of the lord is saying now don't you cast your pearl to the swine don't you cast it among the swine you know your worth know your value if you don't respect yourself nobody's going to respect you yeah, you can make people to respect you but you can make you make a, a stand for yourself to be dis, not to be disrespected you can't do that you can't make them to but you can you can raise a standard for yourself no drama here no stupid here 
no solicitation <laughs> you know some homes that they, they want to avoid all them telemarketers or not telemarketers now those marketers that come knocking on your door and are all trying to sell you what you don't need and sell you insurance or sell you some some kind of product or something soliciting you have a big sign no soliciting i saw one funny one one day you know it said no soliciting we we we, we got no we got our insurance we got our um, uh, stuff and everything and it said we we we, we have found jesus we ain't looking for him anymore you know that was funny so don't you come preach here by the door they put it by that we have found jesus and we we don't need you to come to us we we have jesus so no soliciting no soliciting don't you let no nobody solicit you into their mess he said then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that serve god and him that does not serve it malachi chapter 3 and verse 18 you're going to serve God. God going to kind of distinguish you from them that don't serve Him. And He's going, he going to use you for His glory. So let me get quickly before the time is gone. I believe somebody's been getting blessed in this broadcast. We're looking at when God delays you, what are the things you got to do? And how you got to walk on your destiny? Are you going to make the right decision? Are you not going to work the, walk in the right company so you can fulfill the assignment, the calling that God has for you in the name of of jesus christ if if we trust in our circumstances we become a roller coaster you know what a roller coaster is the ride and do, 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 and it goes up and up and all that and all and all that roller coaster and all that what was that place you got the roller coaster thing huh and those uh parks and those and see the point and all that thing you know i, I don't i don't go on those kind of a things okay you know uh, you, you have seen people seen some oral you know where the machine got break down and then they fling everybody in the head no i ain't ready to fling away now uh, right you wanna you wanna, don't wanna when you trust in your circumstance you're gonna be a roller coaster like a ride like a city point and all them ride and all all that going and going in circles and circles and then it's gonna uh, god forbid that if it's gonna malfunction and 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 fling you away all right when things look down we will look down when we trust in our circumstances but when we trust in god when things go down you look up for your redemption is in god you look up for god is the source of your hope and the source of your strength whatever may come my way i will put my trust in you for you are the strength of my life and there is nothing you can do you are my strength and the strength of my life and there is nothing you can do whatever may come your way you gotta put your trust in him don't you let no downtime put you down look up and look up for your redemption is in god and he's gonna bless you he's gonna bless you he's gonna make a way for you in the name of jesus christ philippians chapter 3 verse 1 philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 rejoice in the lord rejoice in the lord he was in the prison he was in prison he was treated unfairly they didn't give him a fair chance i told you go read Acts chapter 24 he was he was the, the the bible started out that they raised the man an accuser to start up and cook some lie allegations against him Acts chapter 24 Acts chapter 24 they lied on him the false accusation false false report against him but yet he was rejoicing in the lord and god came through for him when god delay we must trust him by doing right even if we do not reach our goal don't you cut corners don't you compromise keep doing right even in the delay even in the detours even in the in the situations that seems to be not pleasant don't you do the wrong thing because you find them do you the wrong thing keep doing the right thing it will come back to you god uses a delay to teach us how to submit to his to his lordship submission to his lordship trust in him all the way trust in him through the water trust in him through the cloudy days trust in him through the rain shine trust in him through the rain trust in him through the storm and through the flood and through the hard times and through the good times and through the bad times trust in him we must submit to god's lordship by acknowledging that he is god and we are not you are god alone 
from the beginning unto the hand you are god alone and you are in control he is god alone and god is awesome god and you must understand that and walk in his word and believe that god i surrender i believe in you i receive your help i may not understand what you're doing but i know that you're doing something i may not see it but i know that it's coming i may not know how i may not know when i may not know why but i know that all things gonna work together for my good and i know that you have given me a life for a season for a reason for a purpose and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna mess it up i'm gonna keep waiting on you i'm gonna stand in you i'm gonna believe in you i'm gonna wait on you no matter what you will come through for me and you never fail and recognize that he is the god that makes all things work for you and god uses uses all that to help you to walk in his will to walk in his word in the name of jesus psalm 127 my time is almost gone and i'm gonna just quickly run it off now psalm 127 i got just three more points and we'll be done psalm 127 he said unless the lord builds the house though the labor labors in vain psalm 127 was one you're gonna say lord build me up i don't want to labor in vain i need your favor in the place of labor the favor of god will terminate the labor the favor from god if put an end to a lifetime of labor you ain't gonna labor and labor and labor and nothing to show for it when you trust in the lord that the lord when it builds the house Unless the Lord build the house, those that labor, they labor in vain. Unless the Lord watch over the city, those that watch over the city, they, they stay awake in vain. You don't want to walk in vain. You don't want to do things in vain. You want to trust in Him and walk in His word and walk in His will in the name of Jesus. Let me show you quickly Isaiah chapter 65. Let's go in there and that will be our prayer. And I'm going to come to my last two points and we'll be done. Isaiah chapter 65 let me show you isaiah and we're gonna pray that prayer in the name of jesus i believe somebody's been blessed today i believe that you get the word of the lord today in the name of jesus christ isaiah chapter 65 all right he said from verse 17 isaiah 65 from verse 17 for behold, I create a new heaven and a new heart. God's going to do something new for you. He said, and the former shall not be remembered. Forget the past. Forget the thing. Forget all that. Let it go. The former shall not be remembered nor come to mind. Isaiah chapter 65 from verse 17 to 25. He said, but, but, but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. Say, Lord, create a new thing for me and do a new walk in my life why i'm waiting on you why i'm being delayed in this season why, why i want to discover the new thing create create the purpose of my creation my victim let me discover it uh he said for behold i will create jerusalem and rejoicing and the people of joy and i will rejoice in jerusalem and a joy to my people and the voice of weeping shall no shall be no more heard in her not the voice of crying no more sorrow for you no more weeping no more crying in the name of jesus no more secret tears crying in the night crying in the night in the middle of the night and the pillow is wet and no more you know insomnia not being able to sleep and pains and shame and heartbreak he said no more crying no more weeping in the name of jesus he said i will rejoice i will rejoice the lord will give you joy and joy like a river joy of the lord is your strength joy comes from the lord not depression and he gives you the spirit of joy in the place of mourning no sickness no pain no defeat in the name of jesus there shall be no more sins and infant of of, of our days 
that are not an old man that has not filled his days for the child shall die hundred years of old and but the sinner but the hundred years shall be at a cost and, and they shall build houses verse 21 they shall build houses in Abidem and they shall plant vineyard and heat of the fruit of them and they shall not build and another inhabit and they shall not plant and another heat uh, for as the days of a three are the days of my people and my elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands uh, and they shall not labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offsprings with them and it shall come to pass that before they call I will answer and while they are yet speaking I will hear them the wolf and the lamb shall feed together and the lion shall hit the straw like a bullock and the dog shall be the serpent's meat and they shall not hurt nor destroy in all of my holy mountains says the Lord before you call is your answer you before the need arises, it's going to supply it. Before the, the, the trouble comes, it's going to save you. It's going to help you. You will not die young. He said, the child will be a hundred years old. You will not be accursed. He said, while you are yet speaking, God's going to send help to you. While you are yet praying, God's going to make a way for you. You're not going to labor in vain. You're not going to do things and you'll be denied of your, of, your, of your entitlement of what is due to you in the name of Jesus Christ. But the key is, you've got to learn how to praise Him and how to praise Him and not murmuring and not complaining. Not murmuring, not complaining, but waiting upon the law, rejoicing in the law, blessing the name of the law, and sing and celebrate the song of Habakkuk. Though the fig tree shall not blossom, neither be stoned in the fine, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the song of my salvation. I will rejoice in the law. Now, in the Bible, first, first Corinthians chapter ten, verse ten. First Corinthians chapter ten, verse ten. He began to say, and and, and neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and they were destroyed by the destroyer. When you're murmuring, when you're complaining, when you're nagging, when you 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 attract the destroyer to destroy. I was talking about in the book in the wilderness, in the journey in the wilderness. Maybe you have been delayed now in your wilderness. You have been delayed now in your journey. You have been delayed. You're not getting the expectation that you expected, and you're not getting where that you thought you should be by now. But be grateful to God where you are. Be grateful to God where he's put you. Be grateful to God for what you got. Be grateful to God that you may not be where you want to be, but you are not where you used to be. You may not be where you are willing to go and all the way and you expect it to be by now, but you are not where you used to be before now. He has moved you forward. He, 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 he's doing something in you. He's moving. He's walking on you. He's preparing the place for you. He's preparing something for you. He's preparing you for the place that he has prepared for you. And you're going to bless him. You're going to thank him. You're going to give him the glory and quit murmuring. Bible says that first, 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 first Corinthians verse 10 and I think verse 9 and, and, and or 8 or 7 and up to before 10. He said, he said all those things that happened in the Bible, all those things they was written for our examples. They was written for us to take the lessons from it. For we are the ones that the end has come upon us. We are the ones that we need to learn from those who have been ahead of us. From those who have walked the journey ahead of us. To understand that if they make it through, God can come through for you. God will never fail. If he made them to get successful, you go and succeed also. And you will not fail. And it's never late for you. Don't you let no devil cause you to give it up and say, no, it's gone. And give up on God and say, God's not going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do what he's going to do. John 11. He's going to come through for you. John 11. They say, come and help Lazarus. Lazarus is sick. You love him. Uh, and and, and, and he's, going, he's very, very critical. The doctor send him home to go die. And we know, know, know nothing else to do. But you know, you, you, we know you, you can touch him. You can heal him. And he delayed and he didn't go until Lazarus died. He was sinking and dead for four days. Then he said, let's go and wake him up. Let's go and wake him up. Thomas said, there, there ain't no Mary and Martha there. Then wouldn't they make, wake him up? He said, no, I ain't talking about that sleeping and snoring. I'm talking about the fact that he's dead. And then he, 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 he run his mouth again. He said of him to shut up. He said, okay, let's go and go die with him. 
No, Jesus said, no, we ain't going to die with him. We're going to raise him up. We're going to bring him back to life, even after four days. And they got there, and everybody was crying, and everybody was saying, he's been sinking and smelling. And then people, they say, you're sinking and smelling. No, they say, no, 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 no. They say, you're dying. You, you're not going to die when Jesus come on the scene. You're not going to die when Jesus show up. Uh, he's going to raise you up. Uh, he's going to say, come forth, Lazarus. Come forth. Come forth. Come forth. Comfort uh, and the Bible says uh, that, 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 that Lazarus came out and said, Lose him, lose that man, let him go. Say, In the name of Jesus, whatever is holding me bound, uh, I'm coming forth uh, and I'm gonna be loose now, and I'm gonna be free now, and I'm gonna shine, and I'm gonna sing my song, uh, and I'm gonna be dance and glorify God and bless the Lord. I'm available, I'm available for his use uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Bible says now uh, they was murmuring, they was murmuring, and God allowed the serpent to go kill all of them he killed them all them the serpent the, 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 the devil came when, when, when you begin to murmur the devil set in and try to destroy and the little joy the little peace the little resources you got left he going he going he going to take it away but when you begin to celebrate the Lord and rejoice in the Lord he's going to make a way for you and Lazarus for this he came back to life if you can raise Lazarus, your situation is not that, that bad. Your situation is not that, that, that delay is not that bad. Uh, that, that detour is not that, that, that is not going to destroy you. That stupid, silly decisions you made uh, and make you want, want derailed. God can, uh, can, can, can help you and can, can reroute you and discover your destiny and rearrange everything for you. Fix you up and make, make, make you all again uh, and you will fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 95 verse 10 and 11 and God said for 40 years i looked that generation and said they are a people here in their heart and do not know my ways therefore i saw in my hunger truly they shall not enter my rest psalm 95 verse 10 to 11. remember in the first part of the teaching i showed you that god said I, 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 i'm not going to take them through the way of the giant through the way of the philistine why because they may change their mind and go back now now he said for 40 years that journey even when he parted the red sea and made them to go on the on the on the other way of the red sea it was supposed to take them just 40 days but it took them 40 years why because they was murmuring they was complaining they was making god mad he said in his anger and he killed all of them except for caleb and joshua and, and all them that are 20 years below so anybody 20 years and above died in the wilderness it's part of the manner it's part of the bread it's part of the provision and the, the, at the time they said where well, we, where can he it's only this manna we hid it how much did they pay for the manna nothing they didn't got no work for it before they wake up manna has come from heaven the angel food and they still didn't acknowledge it they still didn't appreciate it and then they began to say well we want meat he said you want meat he said can you give us meat in this wilderness said, okay he can part the rest he can do anything don't you complain don't you limit god don't you put him in a box god is not a man even without man god is still god is almighty he's all awesome god he's half and an omega and there's nothing like him there's no argument on it there's no other thing that no other play you need jesus christ alone is put your hand call on him no matter where you are what you have don't you go down 40 years make it to 40 days you help yourself when you make the right decision and put yourself in line with god it won't take you 40 years it will take you the right time god wants you he can reroute you and work it out for you he said i love them because why they, they they would not enter my rest because they was rude to me they was disobedient to me they was they was poking me in my face and saying can god do this god can do anything he can make anything he brought lazarus out he can bring you out he made food in the wilderness he kept them he saved them he protected them from all the wild and all the dragon and all the all the lions and all the things uh, he saved them but they wouldn't listen so you're gonna say lord i submit my final point and i'm gonna close here we submit to god's lordship by taking advantage of the present opportunities while we wait upon him you see in the process of your waiting upon him there are still things you need to learn that god you see the blessing the things you learn in the time of blessing you don't learn them in the time of waiting the things you learn in the times of hardship you don't learn them in the time of ease the things you learn in the time of blessing the things you learn in the time of increase and favor and peace and rest and rest all around and everything is going a merry merry happy happy you don't learn it when things are rough 
when times are bad when the the, the 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 challenges are coming upon you when is the time of a season of a storm you don't learn all that but god can make you to see that can learn that and, and see an opportunity there is always a treasure in the trash they may call you trash and call you all sort of things but there is a treasure in you there is a purpose in you there is a glory in you you got to discover the gift you got to discover the talent peter never knew you can walk on the water when the storm comes raging and everything, and then they saw Jesus coming, they said he was a ghost. No, he said, I am Jesus. And all the other 11, they were afraid. They kept them, themselves in the, in the comfort zone of the boat. And Peter said, Master, if it's you, command that I come. Tell me to come. Because that's his word of God. The word of the Lord, the command of the Lord will keep you ahead of others will keep you restored of the years that the cankerworm, and the locusts and the caterpillars and all the things have sucked up and eaten up and destroyed and all the pains and all the troubles is going to restore when you have the word of the lord and get the attention of the lord and give him all your submission and surrender to him and he said come over and he began to walk on the water he began to walk on the water he wasn't really walking on the water he was walking on the word he was walking on the word he was walking on the word of god for the word of bible says john chapter one that in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and god was with the word and the word without him that it was made that was ever made the word came the word in flesh the word is light he said the light shine in darkness and darkness could not comprehend it john chapter one the word he said he came to his own his own disappointed him his own rejected him in the place of your rejection there is a celebration and approval from god for you so don't you miss out on those opportunities to spend time with him to worship him to to fellowship with him to lay down there and cry and bless his name and worship him and glorify him and he's going to come through for you and he's going to make it happen for you uh, no more no there ain't no disappointment when when, when you turn it over to god he returns it as a divine appointment in the name of jesus christ psalm 27 psalm 27 i'm close and god bless everybody being on the birthday of the time out and i gotta go it said david said psalm 27 verse 13 and 14 psalm 27 verse 13 and 14 david wrote and said i would have despaired unless i believed that i will see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living wait for the lord be strong and let your heart take courage yes i say wait for the lord wait for the lord psalm 27 verse 1 he said the lord my light and my salvation what shall men do unto me wait for the lord wait for the lord is your strong courage is your comfort give him the praise and give him the glory i believe somebody's been blessed today i believe you've been blessed today receive the word of the lord with thanksgiving say father thank you for sending your word to me today in the name of jesus i bless you lord i thank you lord i give you lord all the glory in the name of i leave you with a song now said make me a blessing make me a blessing lord i pray make me a blessing make me a blessing lord i will be a blessing i'll be a blessing lord i pray i'll be a blessing make me a blessing lord no matter the circumstance no matter the situation there is a blessing in the rough there is a blessing in the dark there is a blessing in the disappointment there is a blessing there's a treasure in the trash there's a blessing in the in the failures of man and he's going to come through for you give him the praise and glory in the name of jesus christ uh, uh, we celebrate kathleen hell women of god from california happy 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 birthday and we pray the blessing of the lord be over you and your new year and your new age with wisdom grace and strength and grace with glory and grace with strength of the lord in the name of the lord jesus christ enjoy your cake and don't eat too much sugar in the name of jesus enjoy your party and we give god the glory and bless the name of the lord all right angela miller god bless you gloria gooding dalton warfield everyone who has come on the broadcast today we bless the name of the lord in the name of jesus Christ. We also celebrate with uh, Cynthia Reed, uh, son in the military, got some promotion. God bless you, everybody. And we celebrate. At, if you celebrate with people, God's going to bring your home celebration too. 
if you rejoice with them that rejoice god gonna rejoice with you you're gonna got something to rejoice to in the name of jesus god bless you gloria gooden god bless you woman of god helping with all the scriptures and all that that's pretty good we acknowledge you will bless the name of the lord betty brown and stephanie guerrero and cynthia reed and caitlin held the bad day bad day bad day shower shower bad day god bless you everybody evelyn your sunday everybody god bless you all in case i didn't see your name and i didn't call your name i celebrate you all the same and i believe in case you come through the the broadcast in the midst of the broadcast uh, you can have a replay or get on my youtube and subscribe to my channel abraham peters and also you can like my page dr abraham peters and also you can get my book from Barnes and nobles give me this mountain by dr abraham peters or if you're on amazon prime you can get it and all of that book is going to be a blessing to you when you're waiting there are things you got to do when you're waiting you got to read you got to read you got to read you got to study you got to pray in the name of jesus second thessalonians second timothy second timothy 9 said 2 15 study to show yourself approved a workman he need not be ashamed of his work too he said he's rightly dividing the word of truth keep on studying keep on waiting upon the lord in the name of jesus christ all right the ministry blessing you the word is blessing you we expect you also bless the preacher in the name of jesus christ give him the praise give him the glory in jesus mighty name i see you have a wonderful time on the weekend and shabbat shalom everybody and uh, i decree and declare check is coming in the mail for you in the name of jesus and i decree you have a wonderful weekend go to church on sunday morning go to church in the evening go to, to sabbat on saturday those that worship on saturday we acknowledge the lord bless the name of the lord in the name of jesus out of time gotta go and i believe that the blessing of the lord be with everyone men and women of god that's been with me on this broadcast today god bless you all on behalf of my wonderful woman of god and my executive producer uh, she's been telling me time out time out but well you gotta go and do what you gotta do and bless the name of the lord reverend terry we thank you god bless you all in the name of jesus have a wonderful time i'll see you on winning world and prayer hour on wednesday and the holy spirit fire hour on friday have a wonderful time go ahead and please help share this on your timeline share it in groups spread the word of the lord in jesus mighty name god bless you angela miller god bless you woman of god it just in case you tune in on abraham peters on my broadcast for the first time i also also want to acknowledge you and bless the name of the lord celebrate everyone of you in jesus mighty name have a wonderful weekend shabbat shalom and we'll see you next time in jesus mighty name shalom shalom amen <laughs>